So these days I feel like we're so overwhelmed with so much data from so many different sources that it's honestly kind of hard to even know what to do with it. Society has actually gotten to a point where data is a commodity. Now, some of that data is more useful than others, but you know, some of the world's largest corporations are using their users' data to generate billions of dollars worth of ad revenue. Companies will sell you data about your ancestry that, to my knowledge, doesn't really do anything for you other than just satiate your curiosity. So if you're planning on spending your hard-earned money on data with the hopes that that's gonna change your life, I think it's pretty important to understand what that really means and what you'll actually get out of it. Now, in the words of Daryl Davis, a stupid person is someone who has the facts, who has the proper information and still makes the wrong decision. Now, I found that quote to be especially fitting and relevant to what we're talking about in today's video, which is going to be the Generation 3 Aura Ring. This is one of the hottest fitness trackers on the market or fitness health trackers. I don't really know what they like to be boxed in as, but one of the hottest wearables on the market. A lot's changed, a lot stayed the same, and I'm gonna tell you if it's worth the $300 plus price tag, so stay tuned. So, start things off, let's talk about the design. Now, as far as you know, my experience with the Aura Ring, I had the Generation 2 for a couple of months and then they released the Generation 3 and so I upgraded to that guy. As far as the design difference between the two, it's the exact same design as the version 2, but the internals, you'll when you look inside the ring, you'll notice there's some extra sensors that weren't in the previous generation. They don't feel any different though. So as far as like the actual physical design, it's a titanium really lightweight ring that comes in a couple different finishes. It has the sensors on the inside of the band. You know, it's certain amount thickness. It's not, you know, it doesn't feel bulky on your hand and almost nobody will be able to tell that it's a smart ring unless they know the exact design of the Aura Ring. It's next to impossible to tell. It just looks like a regular ring. Now, if you're not sure about what your ring size is, especially with these three little bumps that are on the inside of the actual ring that act as kind of like some of the main sensors. When you order the Aura Ring, they'll actually ship you really quickly a sizing kit. And that sizing kit is really useful because you're supposed to wear it on the finger you want at the size that fits that finger the best, rock it for like a day just to make sure that it's comfortable and you're cool with sleeping with that exact ring on that finger, that type of deal. And when you know what size you have, then you just go and update your order and they'll ship you the correct size. This thing is super lightweight, super durable. I banged it around quite a bit and I haven't noticed any problems. I don't actually lift weights with it though because I think lifting weights with a ring on is super uncomfortable. So that's kind of, if you're a heavy weight lifter and that's kind of your exercise method of choice and you're looking for some sort of like the fitness tracking aspect of it, I probably wouldn't recommend, you know, solely banking on an aura ring for that. That. it's definitely more tailored I would say towards sleep um, but as far as like the design I really really like it it looks sleek the color choices are awesome it you know is super lightweight it's super comfortable I think the design is top top tier especially considering how much they pack into this little tiny ring now the charger that it comes with is this cool little dock if you will so it plugs into USB-C pop it on your desk or your bedside table or wherever you want when you want to charge the ring, you take it off and throw it on the charger and it kind of aligns perfectly based on the groove of the actual little like ring stand and it'll charge it up. Depending on how dead the ring is itself will depend on how long it takes to charge it up. And my experience is like the longest it'll take if it's like completely dead would be like probably close to two hours. But usually you, when you when I toss it on the charger, it's for like half an hour to 45 minute increments and it'll charge up super quick. The battery life also lasts quite a long time. It'll last you probably around, I think like four to seven days, depending on a myriad of things. But my experience is it lasts about like five days and I usually charge it when it gets down to like 20% or something like that. Every couple of days, I'll just toss it on for like, you know, 30 minutes to 45 minutes and it charges up super quick. It's really, really convenient. Now, as for one of the newer features that I was pretty excited about was the 24 seven heart rate tracking. So I also wear an Apple Watch and I'm a big fan of the Apple Watch. So there's kind of a lot of crossover between the two, but it's pretty interesting to see how like the data lines up as far as like accuracy goes. 
Um, the Aura Ring, their heart rate tracking is pretty accurate, I have to say, and it's pretty, you know, quick as well. Like, it definitely does a good job measuring that. Um, and it's 24 seven now. They also are announcing like a fitness heart rate tracking functionality to it. So if you're on a run or something like that, it'll give you like a more dialed in look at your heart rate and how it changes during the course of a workout. This was a feature they promised with the ring when it released and then it got delayed to like the end of this year. And then they recently announced that it's being delayed to the beginning of next year. So at the moment we don't have that feature. Um, I have like a friend of mine who got the ring specifically for that feature. and was really bummed out when she found out that it didn't have that yet. So that is a little bit annoying um, and it's something to consider, but who knows, probably by the time you even see this video, it'll probably be live. I would just double check on the website if that's like the main reason you're getting it. Maybe you could hold off until it finally gets rolled out as a feature that's actually available. Now, heart rate tracking aside, this thing has seven different temperature sensors in it that kind of are all used to really dial in a really accurate look at like your body temperature. And this, you know, temperature sensing is used for like a myriad of features within the ring itself. One of the new ones is actually period prediction. So if you're a girl and you wanna be able to track your period and, you know, predict when your body is going to have your period, that's a feature that's built into the ring now. And like, you know, after a couple months of use and it starts to learn your body's pattern, it'll recognize when you're about to have your period due to like subtle changes in the temperature of your skin or something along the lines of that. I'm not a scientist, but I know that is a new feature, which is pretty cool. And people also have even used it to kind of predict if they're going to be getting sick. Um, that's one thing that they tout on their website is, you know, it can recognize changes in your temperature even before you sh start showing symptoms. So, you know, last a couple years back when the NBA was like in the bubble, they ordered, I think, like a couple thousand aura rings to have like all the players wear them to try to like, you know, see if there was a change in temperature to try to predict if they got COVID or something along those lines. I don't really know how well that works. One thing I did notice, though, is like I actually have been sick. I was sick for like a day, maybe like a week and a half ago from the time of me filming this. Um, with the new aura ring and one thing that was interesting to me is when I Was sick. I didn't get a notification that I was gonna be sick or it didn't like notify me like hey Your body temperature is changing. You may want to like, you know, chill out or I didn't get any sort of notification like that But I got sick. I was wearing the ring the whole time and then you know a week passed and as I'm writing this review I started thinking about it. I was like, I was sick while I was wearing this. I wonder if it showed that piece of data. And so I went back into the data um, and I looked at my temperature for that day and lo and behold, it definitely spiked up. And so I thought that was really interesting that it showed that spike in temperature, but it didn't notify me. And for me, I'm gonna get into like the three main metrics that the ring shows. I don't dive into all the data every single day when I'm using this ring. Um, as far as like the data I get, I'm not a super data heavy person. I just kind of use it for, it's more on the surface purpose. And then it's nice to just have all this data. If I do want to go look back on it, I'll have like, or medical records, if, if you will. It's just nice to have it. But I was able to go back and look and lo and behold, it did have a spike in temperature. So it is something interesting to note. I, I would like to see some sort of like maybe notifying feature or where it like kind of prompts you it's similar to how like you know the apple watch it'll tell you like hey like you know you haven't stood up for an hour i guess the aura ring does that too but you get what i'm saying like there's there's things where it like prompts you when it notices something maybe i just don't know how to turn that feature on but i haven't seen that with the aura ring and that would be cool to know because i know it does prompt you when you haven't been walking around or if you're getting close to your activity goal or things of that nature, it does prompt you for some stuff. It would be cool to have it prompt you for that. It also has a blood oxygen sensor now too. So kind of similarly to how the Apple Watch will measure that metric, the Aura Ring also does it. So that's a pretty neat thing. It'll do it while you're sleeping. Now that I've kind of gone over some of the main features, I think it's pretty important. I didn't really touch on how the ring breaks down all this stuff that I'm talking about. So. The main purpose I would say of the Aura Ring is it's going to show you three different main categories every day and give you a score from one to a hundred. And these are kind of like on the surface, big picture representations of how your body is doing with these different categories. Now those categories are how did you sleep, 
How's your activity? And what's your overall readiness for the day ahead of you? So readiness is kind of like an arbit more arbitrary score that is like a mixture of a whole bunch of different things like you know how your body's recovered from a previous day's workout and how your sleep was and just kind of it's like a mixture of different things that I find is a pretty accurate representation of how your body's doing. So that readiness score is kind of like a total how, how you doing ready for this next day. The sleep score will tell you how you slept the night before and you know you'll get that score and then you get a bunch of other metrics below it that are going to show you exactly what about your sleep was good, bad, what you need to pay attention to. And if you see something is like in the red, for example, which is usually the case for my sleep, which was the reason I wanted to get this in the first place, you see what these scores are and what the different categories and then you can click on it and it'll give you some really helpful kind of tips on how you can improve that aspect of your sleep. So having all this different knowledge about like, you know, very granular in-depth look at what your night's sleep was like and then knowing what it is you can do to improve certain aspects of it. I think it's a really cool way to break down this whole thing. Now, it's a lot of data they're throwing at you. Um, similarly to like the activity side of things, it'll show you you know your activity score and then it'll break it down for you in all these different categories and tell you you know what you did well what you need to work on that kind of thing it's a pretty neat system it kind of lets you go as granular as you want so you can either just pay attention to the big number if that's all you really care about and it's like kind of an overall representation or you can dive into it and you know get into the minutia a little bit and learn more about what it is that you're trying to address and hopefully improve the whole situation now for me, I usually use the Apple Watch as like my main fitness tracker since those features of tracking fitness are not really quite there with the Aura Ring yet, in my opinion. There's a lot of work to be done in that regard. I feel like where the Aura Ring really shines is with sleep and that readiness score. As far as a sleep tracker goes, I've used the Apple Watch to track my sleep and I've used the Aura Ring to track my sleep. I've used them both at the same time for extended periods of time to just kind of compare. And I have to say the Aura Ring absolutely blows the Apple Watch out of the water, in my opinion, as a dedicated sleep tracker. So much so to a point where I don't wear my Apple Watch while I sleep anymore because one, it's not as comfortable to have something on my wrist when I'm sleeping. That's just my own personal preference. The ring is a lot less intrusive, especially when you've been wearing it for a few days, you forget it's even there. And the data you get, I think is just significantly better. I mean, as far as just how in depth that goes, it really is good sleep data. You know, see, it, it it's so accurate to a point where like, you know, there's a metric that shows you um, your movement at night and it'll show me when I'm tossing and turning like a, like every time I woke up and had to turn over to the other side or took a sip of water or if I walked up, woke up and walked down the hall to the kitchen or just anything like that it really accurately shows you and then it shows you how long it took you to fall back asleep like there's just a ton of data that really does give you like a total you know grand picture and I think could be really valuable down the road too as far as just like even if you're not acting on the data right in the moment, which is something we're gonna to touch on. It's just, I feel like from a medical record standpoint, it would probably be really useful to just have all this data for years and years and years, similar to how, you know, all the activity data I've gathered from just wearing an Apple Watch every single day. It's kind of wild. I can look back at every single day's worth of activity for multiple years. It's pretty nuts. There's even features sleep-wise for this thing is so dialed in that like if you take a nap during the day, which I've done a couple different times on mornings where I had to get up super early or something like that, it recognizes when you're taking a nap and it'll adjust your sleep score because of the added sleep you've added to your regimen. So it's like, it's pretty nuts how dialed in it is. Now, to touch on the activity side of things, I know I mentioned that the activity score is gonna be, or the activity tracking is gonna be something that they're working on and they're building into it and it's not gonna be here till you know, early next year. But I've noticed it's kind of hit or miss in my opinion. A lot of times when you open up the app, it, at least for me, it'll prompt me saying, hey, I noticed you were doing, you know, you had an activity at around this time. Do you want to confirm it as a workout so it can log it as a workout if that makes sense? And most of the time it wasn't I wasn't doing anything. Maybe I like walked up a flight of stairs and I don't know, it, rec it registered that or I picked something heavy up, I helped someone carry something down the hall. I don't know. Like just little things like that it'll think they're workouts and it'll try to ask you if it is. 
it's it's just weird it doesn't really feel fully there yet if that makes sense so i guess that's you know it's still a pretty young product um and that's an aspect of it that i know they're trying to work on so i don't know just just to be aware this isn't the i wouldn't recommend this as the end all be all fitness tracker because there's just some weird quirks with it and if you're okay with dealing with that quirks the other benefits you get with it are phenomenal but it's just I don't think it's like a dedicated fitness tracker yet in my personal opinion. Now, readiness score. This is like one of the coolest aspects of the ring in my opinion. It's kind of, there's a lot of uh, different fitness trackers that'll provide some kind of like arbitrary, you know, readiness, ready to go type score, recovery score, whatever you want to call it. Um, but Auras, I think, does a pretty good job of it, and I honestly feel like it reflects how I'm feeling that day pretty accurately for the most part. So, same type of score. It's going to be like, you know, a score out of 100, and then it'll break down in a bunch of different categories why it is that it gave you that score for the day. And like I said, most days, it's pretty accurate. But the day that I'm filming this, I think it's just kind of the stars aligned where, as a good example to let you know, when I woke up this morning, we had a late night flight last night, so I didn't get the best sleep. My sleep score was in the 60s, which is pretty awful for me personally. And my readiness score, because of that, was reflected as in the 60s. So it told me, hey, today chill out, maybe don't you know run or exercise, just kind of focus on recovery today. And so that was my thought process. I was like, okay, like maybe I won't go on a run. I go on a run most days, um, but then, you know, my fiance was like, hey, let's go on a run. We're in California, it's beautiful, let's just go on a run. I was like, okay, and she's a way better runner than me. So we ended up running six miles. And I thought I was gonna be dying like the first half mile. I was like, oh, I can feel it. And I was kind of psyching myself out of being able to go on like a long run because I was thinking about that readiness score and I was like, mm, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it. But I just kind of pushed over that initial, I'm tired hump and I ran six miles. So it's like, yeah, I don't know. Like I'm tired right now, I'm for sure tired. And, but I, I feel like that readiness score, it can be like a double-edged sword because like on days where you feel like amazing and it says you have a really high readiness score, you're like, sweet, I'm ready to go. Um, you know, the data backs it up. I was like, I'm gonna tackle the world today. And it's like almost like a, I don't wanna say placebo cause it is backed by actual data, but it like, further enhances that thought in your head that you can tackle today but on the flip side on days where it says you're you know you're dragging behind a little bit it can have that same effect on you in the negative you know space if that makes sense so like today i wasn't planning on doing anything because i if physical because i was like i was expecting to feel like crap all day because my ring told me it would and lo and behold if i just pushed through that little bit of discomfort and stopped thinking about the score I totally was able to have an incredible run and like all those endorphins and feel a lot better. So it's just take it all with a grain of salt because it is really cool data and it does help you kind of dial in what things are working for you. Like if you feel really good one day and you, you know, the data shows A, B and C, then perfect. You know that those things really help you out and you can try to repeat that. And if you feel like crap one day and you see why in the data, you can try to avoid that thing or address it in some way. But it's not perfect. It's all, just take it all with a grain of salt. That's really the point of what I'm saying. Now, one of the new things they added with the Aura Ring was a membership, which absolutely blows in my opinion. I'm super anti paying $300 plus for a ring and then having to pay six bucks a month for an item. Now, I'm lucky enough that where I got the generation two Aura Ring, and because I had that and they considered me like an early adopter, I was able to upgrade to the generation three for free and have a lifetime membership for free, which is pretty insane and I've never seen a company do that. And honestly, Aura has earned my you know allegiance to them for that for years and years to come because that is so unbelievably like un heard of i've never heard of a company like if you bought last year's iphone and apple released the new iphone and they're like hey because you believed in our last year's iphone we're gonna give you the new iphone for free just send us back your old one no one does that i've literally never seen a company do that so i'm super impressed by aura in that regard and i'm grateful that i don't have to pay the membership 
but I just genuinely feel bad for people that are getting into the boat now having to pay six bucks a month to unlock all the data. So I don't know how long that's gonna last. Hopefully not too long. I'm sure people are willing to because if you're willing to spend $300 or more on a ring, you're probably willing to spend six bucks a month on you know, a subscription to get all the data. But it's just kind of unfortunate. It felt kind of like a cash grab a little bit, but I guess they need to recoup the cost in some way, shape or form for doing, you know, I'm sure their margins aren't super huge based on how much tech they're packing into it. I don't know, business has got to do what they got to do, but it just kind of sucks. I feel bad for people newly getting into the Aura Ring world that they're going to have to pay now six bucks a month to get all the data. As for what all the data is, I've been doing a lot of digging and it's actually not super clear. Um, from what I gathered, essentially you'll still get, if you don't want to pay for the membership, so you can still buy an Aura Ring and not pay for the membership, you just won't get all of the data. So essentially you'll get like your three scores, the readiness, sleep and activity score. And it wasn't super clear, but I'm pretty sure all those different nuanced pieces of data underneath each one of those scores, I don't know if you're gonna get that unless you pay for the membership. You'll still get the score, so if you wanna just, if that's all you even look at, which honestly, most days that's all I look at. Sometimes I'll look at the little nuanced things, but most days I just look at what the score is. So it just kind of depends what you're looking for. They do give you, I think at least as of filming this video, I think they're giving people like a six month free trial with all the data, which is neat. So you can see if you feel like that six bucks a month is even worth it for you. And if the data you're getting is making any sort of impact in your life, that's something that you can at least address, but it's just something to be aware of. Now, there's a lot that I really, really like about the Aura Ring. I think it's a fantastic product. And then there's also a lot that I think is a little bit overrated. And that's what I'm gonna touch on. When it's all said and done, I think it really just boils down to what you actually do with the data and if that data is actually worth it to you. Me personally, I'm the kind of person that has to gamify things in my life to improve them. Like I. I'm such a uh, anti-change kind of person that if I want to really start, you know, focusing on my sleep or focusing on my health or just any of these things, it really helps me to have some dorky piece of technology that I can check data on my phone and get into the minutia of it. That helps me personally. And I, it's, you know, helped me at least understand myself better and try to do things to address aspects that I wanted to change. But with all that being said, I've had plenty of streaks of time in my life where I've been getting this really great data and learning what it is that I need to work on and improve on and fix, and I just completely ignore it. It's kind of similar to like, you know, how many of you have actually set an alarm on your phone for the next morning and you hear the alarm in the morning when you wake up but you just hit the snooze button and you go back to sleep. It's kind of a similar thing. Like this will give you the tools and show you all the data and all that type of stuff but it's really easy to just hit ignore and not do anything about it. So there's something to be said for having data in the long term. Like if you develop a health issue, it might be useful to kind of like look back and see anything. But for the most part, I genuinely feel like it really just boils down to you. Like if you get the data and you do something with it, perfect. And it really does help and it really will work and it does a phenomenal job. But it's very easy to get the data and just completely ignore it and not do anything about it. So if you're looking for a piece of tech that's going to actually, you know, just do all the work for you and change your life and that kind of thing, this is not it. But if you're looking for something that, you know, you're willing to put in the work along with it, the data is only a small piece of the puzzle. You got to do the legwork with it. So. With that being said, I think the Aura Ring is great. I think it's a little pricey. I think the membership is annoying, but for the most part, if you're willing to bite the bullet for that stuff to have some really, really high quality data, I definitely recommend you check it out. I will leave a link to it down in the description down below. I really appreciate you guys checking this video out. If you guys have any questions or anything I missed or wanna know about anything specifically, Definitely leave a comment down below. I usually respond to all of them. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.